and welcome to this special radio town hall meeting against corruption by the Progressive Impact Organization for Community Development, PRIMORG. I am Adaobi Obiabumo. PRIMORG is a civil society group with a mandate to promote good governance, participation and accountability in Nigeria. The MacArthur Foundation supports this town hall meeting against corruption. We have been campaigning and advocating for good and honest people and citizens of integrity to join political parties to contest for public offices. But how easy is it to navigate the political party's primaries nomination process? On today's town hall meeting, we will hear from major actors, some political parties, INEC, and good Nigerians who will tell us their experiences. We will highlight the challenges of the underhand dealings, corruption, and the role of the godfathers and monies in the process. Our aim is to find solutions so that good and honest Nigerians can feel comfortable to join politics and seek elective offices. The program will feature Chinwe Obuka, Assistant Director, Publicity. She's representing Nick Dazan, the Director of Voter Education and Publicity, Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC. Kola Ologbondio, National Publicity Secretary, People's Democratic Party, PDP. Tanko Yinusa, National Chairman, National Conscience Party, NCP. Barista Aha Munjoko, former House of Representative Aspirants under People's Democratic Party PDP for Ahia Zoo, a Zinifite federal constituency in Imo State in 2019, who will join us via the phone. We also have Bukola Idowu, who is the Executive Director, Kimpact Development Initiative. We made all the possible efforts to get the All Progressive Congress, APC, to join us in this program. The National Secretary, Senator John Akwan Udoe Dege, spokesperson of the APC, said to be too busy to be here or even contribute through phone. For the listener, please remember that you are part of this meeting wherever you are listening to us from. Are you a card carrying member of any political party in Nigeria? Are you comfortable with the process of selecting party candidates? Have you tried in the past to seek elective office? Be ready to join us through the phone to share your thoughts with us in the course of the deliberations. Or you want to start sending your text messages via 0902 6167 That is 0902-265-6167. Let's listen to the opinion of some Nigerians on the impact of corruption in political parties' candidate nomination process. Voices Against Corruption. Let the people speak. Hello and welcome to Primark's public feedback series on corruption. Called Voices Against Corruption. And we ask, how do you think corruption affects candidate nomination process in political parties? Absolutely, corruption affects candidate nomination. So actually, when the right uh, candidate is being inhibited because of lack of funds to pursue his ambition, now it it drives it drives the whole situation now back to an angle of square pegs in round holes. You understand because you cannot really ascertain if the person with the right funds to fund their uh, their ambition is the person with the right resources, right intellectual resources to handle or occupy the position. Honestly, that the political party said that one itself is the worst. Because before we are doing an election, you can come out and vote for your right, and it's your right to come out and vote. But this time around, even if you vote from now to tomorrow, what they are doing in this country is selection. They're just doing selection. Because you can come out in the morning, you vote, 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 people vote, and you know that this is the right person, people vote. But at the end, you will see somebody from nowhere. They just select the person and put the person there, and you cannot uh, do anything. If you look at it, you know, corruption is like a culture in Nigeria, but uh, if the democracy is well enshrined in a political party, I'm sure to a large extent, the, the corruption will to a large extent reduce. 
like uh, but let's say the issue of uh, uh, money bags in the in the selection process if that of course is reduced then we can see to a large extent the corruptions in the selection of uh, nominations in political party will equally be reduced it affects the 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 general public in what in in political parties in this way one um is electoral rule observed political parties rule is it observed no because they keep on going around a circle by what using the best uh, 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 is it a choice of uh, they don't use choice of selection they use money and where do they get this money from it is our fund it is the fund that is made for you and i why will somebody one person keep on you will be a, 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 a chairman today from local government chairman he will loot fund Maybe somebody, a governor of the state, put him there because of he was his boy, somewhere. It's not by, by merit, it's by money. I, I would like to take you to the election petitions tribunal. All those number of tribunals wouldn't have taken place if there is no corruption in the system. And you've seen how many have been won by petitioners that uh, do feel that the, the, the wrong has taken place and they've been the victim of it. So uh, I strongly believe that it affects, is there, the Evidence Act. You can easily point to it. You cannot really be able to get the right candidate for the right position. If somebody comes in a, a corrupt way to a position, you can't get the right candidate for the right position. And besides, if somebody bought a seat for any position, when it comes to power, he would definitely want to recover what he has paid for. So he becomes like a business. Welcome again to the program, wherever you're listening to us from. You just heard the voices of some Nigerians on the street. The common saying is that in order to contest in the primaries of political parties in Nigeria, you must know somebody or have money to spend. Godfather's influence and payments to delegates are important. A report by Sahara Reporters in 2018, ahead of the 2019 general elections, had indicated that party delegates at one of the biggest party primaries then smiled home with thousands of dollars from aspirants. Some delegates were said to have received up to $9,000 each as bribe from some aspirants. There is need to remove bribery, money inducement, God for the reason, and other actions which discourage citizens from joining the contest. We are glad to have leaders and stakeholders of some political parties in the country and a Nigerian who before now veered for elected position. And remember that you are in this studio, the Radio Town Hall meeting, wherever you are listening to us from, and you have the opportunity to make your contributions when we open the phone lines. Are you comfortable with the way candidates of our political parties are nominated? It's corruption in candidates' nomination, robbing Nigerians of having the best hands in position. Have you ever been a contestant and were you required to give money to anyone? But before we open the phone lines, let's have Chingwe Obuka from INEX speak to us. Welcome again to the program. Mom. Thank you very much and uh, I'm glad to be here. Yes, from your introduction and from the topic of uh, the discussion, it is true that uh, corruption is robbing us of good leaders in the country. And um, with due respect to my friend here, the political party leader, he has also contested. He's the leader of the party. I think he has more of the experience to tell us. But we know, Nigerians know, that unfortunately corruption is eating deep into our political Corruption has eaten deep into our political sphere. INEC only observes party primaries. By previous amendments to the Electoral Act, INEC was stripped of any role in the process. What is the value of your observation of these primaries? Well, our role is to observe the processes. And the Constitution and the Electoral Law allows INEC to observe and monitor 
the activities of political parties after registering the parties we monitor including their finances so we have set up they too have their own guidelines political parties we have our own guidelines and other electoral laws we monitor to, to ensure that these laws made by the country and by the parties themselves they are observed in the process of selected candidates you observe and you monitor. Yeah. Do you think AINE can play a bigger role in the process? Of course, as an umpire, we, we are playing a big, a big role in the process. In the sense that we have to ensure, in fact, we have to keep ensuring that political parties keep to the rules made by themselves. And you see, if the rules they made are not being obeyed, that is really as a problem. If the, the primary they conduct to select candidates are not transparent, are not credible. That's where we're going to have problems. Because by the time they submit candidate that is that did not emerge from the primaries that is just and fair to all, that's where they start having problems. And that's where the commission, the INEC, the umpire, is ensuring and pleading with them to ensure that they keep to the rules so that we have less problems. In That's why we keep saying political parties go to court because of candidates they have nominated. Okay, let's get straight to Tanko Unisa, Chairman <coughs> National um, Conscience Party. Welcome to the program. Thank you very much for having me. Good evening, Nigerians. <laughs> Tell us how you have been able to deal with the monetary inducements of delegates and other forms of corruption we see in other bigger political parties. Well, um, <clears throat> let's uh, look at it uh, critically. There are basically like three key documents that guide the existence and processes of political party. One, the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria as of 1999 has uh, amended. The Electoral Act and then the party constitution. Then you can follow down the line with when you talk about the manifestos of the party and the bylaws of the political party. These are guiding principles and constitution of the party. Now, whether the political parties follow these documents as it were or they enact their own ideas on how to present candidates is another thing. Sometime in 2002 to 2003, uh, may he so rest in peace, Chief Ghani Fawemi, who was the founder of the National Conscience Party, um, took INEC to court. Because at that time, the INEC was collecting money for any candidate. Like if you're a candidate, if you are, uh, you 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 been nominated by your party, you will pay certain amount of money to INEC, maybe one million, two million, in the processes of contesting election. So we, he took the case to court on behalf of the party, being that the party is um. It's a political party that belongs to the peasant farmers and all. So we don't have that huge money. So we took the case to court and won. And that was the beginning where INEX stopped collecting fees from candidates. In other words, the idea was to stop the idea of using money as an inducement for somebody to contest election. So the NCP at that point in time, what we did that, we do not collect... Um, nomination form fee we don't collect money from interest form unlike the other political parties that um, for example apc that collect 45 million naira from a presidential candidate how uh, much does your party collect nothing nothing zero nothing and the reason is this how do we form a correlation within fighting INEF for not collecting money and then here we are again now we're collecting money from the candidate there's no it doesn't make sense and in other ways, it also encourages people who have credibility, who can run on their credible person to run for election, and giving it an oppor opportunity for every specs of the uh, of this process, everybody, a farmer or a shishina, as long as you have the prerequisite to contest election. In fact, for that one, we punish any individual that seems to be bribing delegates. The moment you are found to have been bribing delegate, you are presumed to be disqualified. So, in that case, we are trying to run away from inducing inducement because we have this premonition that the moment you bribe, you sell your house, you do a lot of things to get a candidate so At the end of it all, what you do is the first thing when you get to office, you will try to recoup the money. And that will affect. So, let's assume we have a farmer 
in my village yes who wants to contest under your party that's right he doesn't have to no need to he no to pay money for the form or anything he since does. the beginning of the ncp in 1994 no candidate has paid a single dime in terms of payment for contesting election that is nomination form or interest form you can confirm from daily momodu you can confirm from martin's onogu you can confirm even for my neck if they I are, was going to ask, are you aware of this <laughs> <laughs> are you aware of this one <laughs> yes yes it is it is right because it's the parties that actually charge the members nomination forms and interest form Expression of interest for that's mm. commendable. Okay, um, let's quickly get to Barrister Aham Njoku. He is a former House of Representative aspirant under People's Democratic Party PDP for Ahia Zoo in Sinifiti, federal constituency in Imo State. Thank you so much for joining us, Sam. Thank you very much. Um, briefly share your experience when you contested to represent your constituency at the federal House of Representatives with us. What happened? But, but the point is that politics in Nigeria has, has been reduced by many politicians into a commercial or business venture. Apart from my, the official fee, which is called nomination fee, which the party charges, there are three layers of monetary inducement or corruption in the selection process of candidates by political parties in their public elections. And this comes across most of the political parties. First, in every one local government area or state, there are people known as leaders in political parties. These are the kingmakers. Before a candidate can succeed in the primaries, he or she must meet the monetary demands of the leaders. Secondly, the next stage is that delegates to a primary election demand money from candidates or candidates offer them money for their votes. Did you experience that when you contested? Of course, I'm speaking from experience. The, the monetary inducement becomes higher depending on the office being contested. And uh, thirdly, sometimes the electoral panel members also are also offered the monetary inducement by candidates. And uh, there are no less than five consequences of this uh, monetary inducement. Uh, the candidates emerge not based on merit, but how deep their pockets are. Often, the wrong candidates emerge and their performance in office will be a mediocre performance. And most of the candidates when elected in the general elections are more interested in recouping their money than they spent with profit than self-renting service. And sometimes political parties lose elections because of trading uh, wrong candidates. And um, ultimately, the, uh, the corrupt approach to selection of candidates leads to alienation of voters or what you may call voter apathy in subsequent elections. Mm -hmm. And uh, if I'm talking about uh, maybe solutions, I think that every registered member of a political party should be allowed to vote at the primaries. This will reduce corruption because delegates, when you make it the delegate election, the stakes become higher. Then also the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, and security agents should supervise party primaries to make sure that rigging is minimized. And finally, I think that um, all actors in the selection process should vote according to their conscience and emphasize financial gains so that the country can benefit from good and credible candidates. Voter our party. Thank you so much. But before we let you go, which is the bigger problem? The influence of godfathers or money in the nomination process? Both of them go by the pursuit. Mm. The godfather before they can allow you to uh, uh, create an environment for you to succeed, they demand, they will always demand for monetary inducement or negotiate. They negotiate what you, you will be giving to them if you get uh, into office. And then the delegates themselves to the feel that they have been working for the party over a long period of time and therefore that primary election is their opportunity to benefit from the, the contestants. So, Unless you have a deep pocket in this country, the possibility of you might as a candidate in any of the major political parties is very remote. And that is the truth. Thank you so much for your submission and your solution, which um, you stated that um, every mem card carrying member of the political party should be allowed to vote during primaries. Yes. Thank you so much, Aham Njoko. Thank you. My pleasure. Um, we just heard from.
Ahamu Jokun, who was a one-time aspirant under the People's Democratic Party. Let's quickly get to Bukola Ibu, the Executive Director of Kimpak Development Initiative. Kimpak has monitored several elections since establishment. How often did you come across corruption in the process of candidates' nomination and what do we stand to lose as a country? Thank you very much. I think um, uh, what um, uh, Dr. Uh, Tanko said was abso uh, absolutely right and um, in terms of um, the the court case won by Sheikh Ganifa, but I just wanted to put a rider to that 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 um, that did not only apply to um, INEC alone. It also applied to the political party because the moment is it that the one thing we need to understand is that by that judgment it has made um, charging of a nomination fee by political party illegal. One thing that is what we need to know. Because, you see, when you keep charging that particular money, you are shrinking the space, which means, and the effect is, 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 is enormous. We are not likely going to get it. And that is why Nigerians are condemned to the people they find their faces on the ballot. And we don't have any choice than to stick to what we have on the ballot. Uh, but the process has always been wrong. The process has always been faulty. The process has always been fought with corruption most times. And I give you an example. Now, before I get um, to you, let's quickly take a Hammond Joku again. Mm -hmm. Hello, sir. Hello. Um, sorry, we have to call you back. We just want you to quickly share your experience on how these negoci um, negotiations you mentioned earlier are done. And the state executives. And uh, 
what I've narrated earlier also applied to me. Uh, but I would like to start uh, mentioning and so that that will not become uh, personal. But the point is that immediately you declare that you want to run for an election, most of the people in the party here, like both people who hold the official position and those who are not the position, but who are influential, they believe that you come with a lot of money and that it is their time to enjoy whatever effort or whatever work they are put into the party. And they begin to make demands. And some of the demands are even ridiculous. You see some people uh, telling you that, uh, uh, their, that their child has not paid for school fees, or that their wife is sick, or that they need a, 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 a phone, and all that. So everything boils down to money. In the final analysis, you, you have to service the party apparatchik and then service some people who have been playing some part in, in the uh, political party in the past. Everybody knows this. Does this it goes on in most of major political parties. Does it mean that um, a person who does not who is not buoyant cannot contest? He stands no chance at all. Let us <laughs> not as as Nigerian nice. politics stands today. If you don't have and let me even tell you, it has continued to increase. I may not give you the data because now, but I know that what it cost to contest election in 1999 has almost tripled to what you are going to use now to contest election. And we're talking about increasing the terms of delegates, particularly that, so that they can they'll allow you to match. And that is why nothing is working. Because by the time people spend a lot and they match, as candidates in the general election or win the general election, they are busy recouping the money they spend. Some people have people selling their, their houses, so, some sell their cars, some sell land to run for the in Nigeria. And that should not be the case. But this is really what is going on okay. in Nigeria today. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for that explanation. Um, Ma'am, you've heard what um, Bukola said. You've heard what um, Ahamon Joko said. I want to believe that INEC is aware of all of this. What is INEC doing to ensure that all of this stop? Well, that's a very big question. INEC is interested in putting the processes right. The laws are there. The electoral acts guiding and other laws guiding the conduct of election and the conduct of political parties, even in their finances. We hold meetings with them and try to impress on them to ensure that they do the right thing. They follow their laws. Because once the laws are broken, once things are not done right, and the candidate that emerges through a fraudulent uh, means, we are going to have a problem. Now, INEC is not going to start carrying um, the, the stick to start beating the political parties, not to bribe their way, not to uh, encourage godfatherism. But what we are doing is making sure that the processes are right. Once, once we put the processes right, it's not left for them to obey, the, to obey the laws. Now, we already know that Nigerian politics is money politics. Why like they have been given their experiences. For you to be elected, for you to be seen, to even come out to contest, to even try to contest, you must have gone around so many people people who are of influence in the country, people who have the money, who, people who are the godfathers, who will make sure that you get there. It's not really mat it doesn't really matter what you have to offer. That's what we have seen. It's not what you have to offer. It's not what your, your level of education. But because money but plays... how much you have. Yes, how much you have. And much, how much inf influential people you know, which is not supposed to be the right thing. And that's why we are having problems in, 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 in the leaders we have. But we are believing that... Uh, the political parties, once they do the, the right thing uh, to elect credible people, not really because they have money or because they have uh, given so much to some people, but if they follow the processes, the rules made by themselves and by, uh, and by the Constitution and by the INEC, the Electoral Act, if, you, if they follow the processes, a good leader will emerge and then let them play less emphasis on money. You've talked about INEC impressing on the political parties to follow the rules. Yeah. But godfatherism and money politics still plays out. Does it mean that INEC is helpless? Well, this is a problem of the country, not really of INEC. 
Like it's not only in INEC that uh, people pay their way to get what they want. It is the corruption in the system. Corruption in the system. system. Okay, we just have um Kola Olobodio, the publicity secretary of the People's Democratic Party. How easy is it for um, citizens without godfathers and money to secure tickets in PDP? Well, for us in the People's Democratic Party, I'll start by saying that we encourage women participation by ensuring that the nomination process is such that you don't pay nomination fee at the purchase of forms. All you do is to pay expression of interest fee. And, and how much is it? It depends on the, on the office that you are contesting. If, say for instance, we are running for House of Assembly and the form fee for, for House of Assembly is 750000 for instance, I'm not sure, you can be made to pay 10% of that, maybe like 75000 And for the youth, particularly that have shown interest in the House of Assembly or House of Representatives too, will ensure that the cost of form is not as high as it affects the Senate, Presidential or Governorship. And that is a means of encouragement for the younger people to participate in the process. Yep. Money and Godfatherism. Well, when people talk about Godfatherism, it has different meanings and different purposes to different people. So, if, for instance, where I come from now, in my own other state constituency or federal constituency. I play, if I would look at it, you can say that, oh, sometimes one will play the role of what we call a godfather. But it's not every godfather that require payment, that require funding, that make demand of the aspirant. Some people, because of their experience in the political environment, they can take an aspirant round and say, this is the candidate we are going to support. I think the issue of godfatherism should be properly defined within our political climate. And when I say being politically properly defined, I mean that it's people who ask for money in return for support that you can describe as godfathers. Those who do it willingly and free, you can't call them godfathers. And you're talking about the influence of money wherever it goes, wherever, wherever you go, money plays an important factor an important role in politics. What we can do is to ensure that we go back to the system of old, the old age style, in which the people on their own, because it's not about the political class, it's about those who are going to elect the representatives, that they take a decision. Now, for instance, I'm from Kaba in Kogi State. Our community can sit down and say, look, no matter the amount of money an individual is bringing, we will resolve in support of a particular candidate. And everybody who is going to go and elect that person must do it fr free will, pro bono. No issue of bringing money. But you know the kind of politics that we play in Nigeria, unless and until it is redeemed, money has a major role to play. Because people believe that when we elect you and you get there, you aren't going to come back. To us. So as a result of that, pay me what you can pay me now and let me vote for you. And it's not just within the party system. It has also affected the political process in its entirety. So that on election day, vote buying. Vote buying. Becomes in, a means of election. Okay, in 2011, you contested. Yes. Did you experience this in terms of godfatherism and money politics? <laughs> well, um, in 2011, yeah, I experienced some level of godfatherism, but not as pronounced as we have in other constituencies. And I say so because there were decisions taken. Uh, you know, the political process is about decision. There were decisions that were taken that were not in my favor. And as such, I can say that, oh, out of buy, it is, I can say out of buy that I'll declare that oh, it's good for that reason. But in every political system, there are those who take decisions. In every political system, there are people whose order of importance in, the, that, in that particular political environment will decide on who they are candidate. Okay. Before I open the phone lines, how can PDP, your party, remove the effects of corruption in the nomination process? 
But if we talk about corruption in the nomination process, I can clearly tell you, we came into office as a national as national working committee in 2017. One thing that we have succeeded in doing is that we have reduced the issue of corruption in the um, in the nomination process to its base, to its barest level. For instance, in the days of old, you can come to the party, I heard that you can come to the party secretariat. Oh, you heard? Yes, I heard, because I didn't participate in that process. I heard that you could come to the party secretariat and say that, oh, give me the list of, of uh, delegates, and I paid. But in this PDP, under Prince Richard Secondus, since 2017 till date, I can testify, it's practically impossible. We have returned power to the delegates and to the people. Now, having returned power to the delegates and to the people, it is now dependent on the delegates and the people to determine what they want in, the cho in making their choice of candidates in an election. Certainly, no longer, the power does not, the power does not, uh, does not reside at the National Secretariat any longer. It resides with the people. So if I bring five Ghana must you go can bring with can, money. You will not even have <laughs> the space to bring five Ghana must go into the Wadata Plaza of the Prime Secretary as we speak today. Okay. Um, before we continue, it's time for us to get our listener to join the conversation. Do you want to contest elections? Is the money the biggest problem or the role of the Godfather? Hello? 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 Good evening, Apostle Osaloy. Thank you for joining us. Hello, Mr. Kowal, and this is my greeting. Good day, sir. How far? The first bit of the liberal reform was to say that 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 is on the on the on the table for the president. Then he signed it and put it in order so that we we can have an independent independent candidate. An independent candidate can win election. No more going to PDP to go and buy buy the reform in a large price or EPC. We can see that the things were because if after they buy this. They did the form in a large uh, amount. When they get the head into the office, they will like to recover the money they spend. So the, the best uh, option to this is uh, let this electoral reform, let it be signed. And change things in order. That even if you will want an election in any platform, you cannot leave that party. Unless we, you will know that you must leave that. If you are going to leave the party, that means you are going to leave the position for them. This is for to offer us the Thank you so much, Apostle Osalai. Hello. Good evening. Your name and where you're calling from. Let's hear you, John. Go ahead, please. Whether you have money, Under which political party did you vie for? Okay. Thank you so much for it. Okay, thank you so thank you so much for your contribution. Um for you the listener, do you think the political parties get the best candidates during the process that is full of money? We want to hear from you. Hello. Good evening. Your name and where you're calling from? Uh, this is Dr. Henry. Let's hear you, Dr. Henry. I'm calling from Maraba. Go ahead, please. Okay. I'm suggesting that uh, anybody can come, not that they will request for money. 
so much for your contribution. Um, Chima, you've heard what um, the participants have said. Um, INEC is always and has always been dragged to the courts by candidates in the course of their disputes. This is despite the fact that you cannot tell a party who to nominate as a candidate. How can INEC play a role here? Well, um, INEC is being drawn to the courts by all the parties and candidates when there's a problem. And that is why INEC is emphasizing on voter education and voter enlightenment. And as, at the same time, appealing to political parties to do the right thing, I keep saying it, they don't do the right thing. Because whatever happens to the party, INEC is affected because INEC is umpire. INEC it does not take part in the nomination of candidates. We only observe. And we only insist that they follow the process so that a credible candidate will emerge. Because if a good candidate, a credible candidate emerges from a, a right process, there will be less litigation. And if there is less litigation, things will go right. We will have time to do other things and the country will be better for it. So we are emphasizing. I like what a caller said, that the, in, the, in PDP, we don't want to mention any of the parties, but in, in their own party, PDP, that they are playing the issue of Godfatherism and money. They are bringing it down. They are making it not to be what they will be on top of what they intend to do. But then we need voter enlightenment. If the candidates now have been, the delegates and the candidates are now going to be emerging from the the the, 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 the the people the people will not decide who they want if it is true then and we need to emphasize the citizen. yes we need to now emphasize on voter enlightenment letting people know that this is it is your right you don't need to sell your vote no matter what the person has given to you if you know the right candidate if you know the person that can represent you well if you know the person that has the interest of you at heart vote for that person Whose so role is it to, to do this enlightenment, to carry out the enlightenment? Voter education department, INEC does that. But parties, because they are the beneficiaries of the outcome of election, so they also need to do that voter education. Tell the people, enlighten the people that they should not allow themselves to be bought over by candidates. And that's why when they do their primaries, we encourage them. No, not even encouraging them. When they do their primaries, we, they submit their list to INEC the list of a candidate that have emerged, candidate with INEC will now publish the list so that people will now know if this person is not of good character, if this person cannot represent you well, if you have anything against this person, you can then complain. You have the right to to suit or to, to, to file a suit against that person that he or she is not qualified. So people have to be more involved in selecting who will rule them. People, citizens, should be more involved in selecting who will rule them. Um, let's get to Tanko Yinisa. Mm. Going forward, yeah. what measures must be put in place to urgently address bribing of party delegates? Legal framework. The legal framework should start from the political parties and even possibly the constitution if it's a national issue. Because if you, if you leave it open and then political parties or individuals can decide if you are, there's, a, there's a punishment for those who are seen to be doing the wrong thing then people will kill. So we expect that probably for the part of the Constitution and the Electoral Act and the party's constitution should provide a bylaw that at the processes of any primary, any political individual or a group who, to be, who, has, who seem to be bribing the delegates in the processes of election 
will lose that process. It starts as a measure. So people will start being careful how to involve themselves. That's what we do. We really institutionalize it. So when we institutionalize that, people will be afraid of trying to bribe. But of course, the bribery, of course, has its own root cause, as already been elucidated and amplified by so many other persons. But secondly, again, you look at the ownership of the party itself. How is the party being owned? Is it owned by individual or is it being owned by the members? This is where the issue of membership dues now come in. If members, members are paying dues in the processes of the, the, the political party, they now know that they own the party. So in selection processes, they may not have to be like, uh, say that it is their own money that is in use in the processes of the selection. So they own the process. So they've already paid their due, but nowadays, Many the members of the political party don't even pay dues. They are even expecting the political party to give them <laughs> the dues, as the case may be. Then, yes, and then um, thirdly, there's the issue of inclusivity. This inclusivity comes about the decision-making process. Is it how does it start from the world level? When did it get to the world level, to the local government level, and then to the state, and then the federal? The situation is that most of the decisions do not take place at the world level. They take place at the apex level. Of course, nomination may come sometimes from the world, but then does it really come that you know the candidate? Is it from a street where the world is instituted? Has he, this particular person been interested in community development or mobilizing for the process of making a country great? Do we know the person in particular? No. Most of the candidates bring themselves in as candidates. And even at the point in time, they even bring their manifestos to the party. Okay. And, yeah, so, so these are some of the things that we really need to put. And then party leadership supremacy. Thank Today, you, we don't have party leadership supremacy. Thank you so much. We can still accommodate more calls. Hello. Hello. Good evening, sir. Your name and where you're calling from? My name is Jonathan. I'm calling from Kawusa. Okay. Do you think the political parties get the best candidates during this process that is full of money? Yes. They do so because I am telling you based on the experience how stressed member we have right away. In fact, the electricity I enjoy in my village today is his country. And likewise, our senatorial, our senator that represents us in the Bonny Center, we enjoy his water and our food road. And even though our government has uh, defected, but we, we did a very wonderful job when he was the GDP chairman, when he was the deputy governor, and even when he is a governor, he's, uh, even though he has defected, but I can see say that is a pure product of PDP because the Boy State is a core PDP state. Thank you. So uh, PDP has to do the best among people in the Boy. I don't know of other states. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much for your contribution. Our time is almost up. But before we go, I have a last question for everybody to answer to. I will start with you, Idowu. How can the ordinary, honest Nigerian who does not have money or does not want to patronize God for that reason be accommodated? Presently, as it stands, is a difficult thing to achieve. I must, I must say, and you agree with me. Majority are saying money play important factor because even, even, even if you don't have money, let's even let's even assume the ticket was given to you on the platter of gold. You have to campaign, moving from one world to the other. Advertising on the radio is a whole lot of money. And that is why you see the new electoral hat being talked about, I mean, I mean the amendment going on now. We Looking at a situation where that campaign money, that campaign finance, we have to be increased because it's not realistic. Let's be sincere with ourselves. But having said that, to be I, increased, to be increased, of course. Why do you say when you how do you a governor even spend more than one billion to contest? And what you have there, because if you look at it, it is not realistic. Now, for a, for a president, you say a president should spend how much in the constitution? Now, touring out the touring the thirty six states. How does that happen? Now, putting an advert on a national daily for how many days? 
you know it's 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 a it's a whole lot of money but having said that i so much subscribe to what dr uh, unisa said party ownership party financing is key you no know, when we were young i see saw my 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 dad mm -hmm. my dad um upn card mm -hmm. you know they contribute the ticket so party ownership rests on the people not on a small but as it is now you see the senators you see the um as of red member they are the one financing the party have you asked ourselves how is pdp been able to i mean i mean finance the party how is apc able to finance the party how is um, uh, natural, uh, um, natural conscious party be able to finance their party now what is the contribution of the party member now as soon as the party member doesn't have a say I mean financially and it's just a small clique that is financing that party those small clique has the right to choose and to say this is where we are going and lastly is what you see and this is area we are not actually looking to how viable how robust how what is the integrity of the electoral justice system we have in country as it is now people do a lot of things and they say let's get to the tribunal let's go to uh, pre-election cases and everything how viable can a party member who is wrong who said oh due to corruption i have been edged out go to the court and get the electoral justice needed so these are a lot of conversation we need to begin to have as we begin to progress so that a common man and a citizen of a, i mean I'm just a party member can contest on the platter of whether you have money or not, the process will have to be in place. Thank you so much for your submission. Thank you so much, Inisa. Kola, do you sub You gave us, um, you submitted, um, sorry, your contribution was on party inclusivity. You yeah. talked about ownership. You talked about leadership. No, do not let us deceive ourselves. Money plays a lot in the system, even for electionary. I did just use a calculation. We're having a meeting. From the world level, we have 120,000 words plus. And if you are to invite each and every one of them at a minimum of 5,000 naira, the total cost ended up about 17 to 20 million naira for a sitting of a meeting. How on earth, where do I get that kind of money? It's not possible. So we say if you will allow others to use treasury, money belonging to everybody, to finance their political uh, uh, structure in moving the party, then you must provide funds for all the political parties at the minimum rate. Okay, thank you. That one will encourage even the prison farmer from a village to at least know that there's money somewhere he can use since it's credible. Okay, Kola, one minute. Well, for us in the People's Democratic Party, we will continue to build on reducing the importance of money and um, uh, 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 bribing of delegates. We want to work on that because we have seen the effect on the polity. And as far as we are concerned in the People's Democratic Party, I agree with what you do said in respect of uh, getting electoral justice because we have been deprived through rigging in many states' elections. And when you go to court, uh, the party in government will ensure that it is their candidate that gets justice in their cause. And I also will want to suggest that to whom much is given, much is expected. Professor Yakub Mahmoud in INEC, he has done one thing. We knew how he did it then. There are complaints, there are insults concerning the role of INEC in our elections. We expect that he should use the next four years to rebuild the image of the commission and rebuild his own image so that history will be kind to him. Thank you. History will be kind to him. Chinwe? Yeah, we should know that uh, INEC is not the only... INEC is an empire, conducts election, prepares for election, but it's not the only stakeholder. Political parties are there, security agencies are there, civil society organizations are there. So when all these people work together, INEC will succeed. So we appeal, we'll appeal to them collectively to help INEC to succeed so that we can enthrone a better democracy in Nigeria. Thank you so much everyone here. We must reduce money politics if we must elect the best candidate. 
And we have come to the end of this special Radio Town Hall meeting against corruption. We appreciate our guest, Chimwe Obuka, who is the Assistant Director of Publicity, Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Kala Olobodion, the National Publicity Secretary, People's Democratic Party, PDP. Thank you. Thank Tanko Yinusa, mm. the National Chairman, National Conscience Party, NCP. Thank you for being here. Thank you very much. We also appreciate Bukola Ido, the Executive Director at Kimpact Development Initiative. Thank, Thank you very much. And last but not the least, Barista Ahamunjoku, former House of Representatives aspirants under People's Democratic Party, PDP, for Ahiazu Ezinifite, um, Federal Constituency in Imo State. Again, we should let you know, we made all efforts to get someone from all Progressive Congress, APC, to this program. The National Secretary, Senator John Akpan Udoedege, spokesperson of the APC, is said to be too busy to be here. I even contribute through phone. If you have a message for us or you want to contribute to what you have heard on this program, please reach us through info at primog.org. Primog again is spelled P-R-I-M-O-R-G. We want to encourage you to please visit the news page of our website, news.primog.org. That is news.primog.org. Dot org for all the details of our reports, videos, and interviews. Visit our website, primog.org, to get all the information about Primog. Primog's engagement against corruption is supported by the John T. and Catherine V. MacArthur Foundation, committed to building a more just, verdant, and peaceful world. Get more information about the foundation at its website, macfound.org. We will give you enough notice for our next Radio Town Hall meeting here. Please follow us on all our social media platforms at Official Primark to get timely information about our activities. Many thanks to the Primark team for a wonderful work. The executive producer of Primark's Radio Town Hall meeting series is Abonsuremi Okiria. I am Adobe Obiabumo. Stay safe.